things uh, over the years that um, law is something you can't live with. And then on the other hand, you can't very well live without it. And I, I thought about that from time to time as I've written many articles for professional journals to be read by academics and uh, legal scholars. And on the other hand, uh, articles and uh, chapters in treatises that are used for practicing lawyers. Uh, then again, it's just uh, popular press articles that I've written to try to make the law a little more accessible. But I've realized I have not really taken the trouble to focus on combining the law and the people it affects. And it seems to me that uh, I, I go back to a line that uh, I put into an opinion I wrote a number of years ago with, at, on the Supreme Court of Mississippi, that both the judges who were involved in the cases and the people who were affected need to have the perspective of, first, the wisdom of Solomon, patience of Job, and I've added, and the humanity of Shakespeare. Because if the process of the law and the constitutional system we have doesn't enhance the quality of our humanity, doesn't uh, provide us uh, with the opportunity of achieving a society that va values above all else human dignity, then we're not really doing our job. So I've tried to do this in a series of stories going back to a slavery case in 1818, right around the times of statehood, coming forward about 130 years to the end of the Depression and uh, the beginnings of World War II era, stories that combine both the law, the people, the public, and, and try to show just how each has to have the other in order to make, again, make this a society that can actually achieve that ultimate goal of a society, a public order of human dignity.